Welcome back. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa was at the forefront to receive the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mish'al Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, and his accompanying delegation upon his visit to the kingdom. The Emir's plane was accompanied by a squadron of the Royal Bahraini Air Force upon his entry into Bahrain airspace. His Highness the Emir was also received by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Guard Commander His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, the personal representative of His Majesty the King His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa and the Minister of the Royal Court Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa as well as a number of their Highnesses and officials. His Highness said the Emir greeted Bahraini senior officials and His Majesty the King greeted the Kuwaiti delegation.
The mission of honor was formed, chaired by the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. His Highness the Emir of Kuwait was accompanied by Sheikh Ali Khalifa Al Adbi Al Sabah, Sheikh Ali Jabir Al Ahmed Al Sabah, Sheikh Khalifa Abdullah Al Jabir Al Sabah, Sheikh Jabir Mubarak Abdullah Al Ahmed Al Sabah, Sheikh Salman Al Sabah Al Salim Al Hamoud Al Sabah, Sheikh Azam Mubarak Sabah Al Nasser Al Sabah, Sheikh Fawaz Al Saud Al Nasser Al Saud Al Sabah, and senior officials of the Emiri Diwan. After that, His Majesty's motorcade headed to Sakhir Palace, accompanied by motorbikes and cavalry.
After that, the artillery fired 21 shots in salute to the honorable guest of the country. After that, a number of students from the Ministry of Education greeted the country's guests. After that, the Arda was performed on the occasion of the visit of His Highness the Emir. After that official reception, the protocols were held for the Emir, followed by the national anthems of both countries. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Kuwait. Assalamu alaikum wa Bahrain.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held official discussions at Sakhir Palace with the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mish'al Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah. His Royal Highness said the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and members of the two delegations were present. His Majesty the King welcomed His Highness Sheikh Mish'al, noting the close relations between the two countries distinguished by unity, harmony, and a shared destiny throughout history. His Majesty expressed the pride of Bahrain and its people for His Highness's visit, which expresses the strength of Bahraini Kuwaiti relations. His Highness Sheikh Mish'al expressed his deep thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the warm welcome and hospitality he received. His Highness congratulated congratulated his Mashi on the anniversary of the National Action Charter, praying to Allah the Almighty to perpetuate prosperity and progress for the kingdom and his people under the wise leadership of His Majesty the King. The two sides reviewed the historical relations in various aspects of close cooperation and coordination and ways to enhance and develop them. The meeting stressed the continued keenness to develop relations and to advance joint work in all fields to meet the interests of the two countries and people and achieve their common aspirations. His Majesty the King affirmed that Bahraini Kuwait relations are an honorable model of distinguished relations between brothers and are based on strong foundations of brotherhood, interconnectedness, visions, understanding and coordination. His Majesty expressed his pride in His Highness's efforts in strengthening fraternal ties and in the honorable stances that Kuwait always takes towards Bahrain and its people in various circumstances. His Majesty the King stressed that these stances embody the strong and well-established bilateral relations praising Kuwait's development and civilizational renaissance over the years at all levels and its historical and pioneering role in supporting joint Gulf, Arab and Islamic action and its remarkable efforts in humanitarian work. They also discussed the latest developments in the region and the regional and international developments and their repercussions on international peace and security in addition to a number of topics of mutual interest. The two sides stressed the importance of Iraq respecting the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Kuwait and adhering to bilateral and international treaties and agreements and all relevant United Nations resolutions. After that, His Majesty honored His Highness Kuwait's Emir the Order of Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa in appreciation of His Highness's efforts and his prominent role in consolidating bilateral relations and strengthening the historical ties between the two countries. His Majesty also presented His Highness the Bahraini sword on this occasion. His Highness the Emir expressed the pride of the Kuwaiti leadership, government and people in its deep-rooted fraternal relations with Bahrain, which has always been characterized by its heritage since ancient times. His Highness Sheikh Mish'al praised the authentic and honorable positions of the kingdom under the leadership of His Majesty the King, praising what Bahrain has achieved thanks to His Majesty's wise approach in terms of renaissance, progress, development, comprehensive achievements, distinguished successes at various levels and a high status at the international level. Poet Mohammed Hadi Al Halwachi recited a poem on the occasion of His Highness Kuwait's Kuwait visit. Kuwait Kuwait واستوحي أبيات شعر من محبتها فأصدق الشعر بيت بالهوى التهما واستوحي أبيات شعر من محبتها فأصدق الشعر بيت بالهوى التهما وأصدق الشعر بيت قال قائله بعض الذي في سويد القلب قد كتما وقل سلاما على أرض بها بزغت شمس الصباح فولى الليل وانهزما آل الصباح الأولى قد أشرقت بهم شمس الكويت فصانوا العهد والذمما وحصنوها بعدل فهي شامخة مدى الزمان تناغي النجم والقمما ما طب ساحتها في ظلهم عنة بل قدموا الخير والإصلاح والسلام كفاك رب الورى 
من كل حاسدة ودمت بين الورى للمكرمات حما ودمت بيرق نصر رف شاهقه على الأنام وأنف الغي قد رغما ودمت بيرق نصر رف شاهقه على الأنام وأنف الغي قد رغما فاصدح بشعرك في حب الكويت وقل أهلا وسهلا بمن بالخير قد قدما وحي من خط للعلياء لاحبة وحي مشعل خير بالهدى التزما وحي من خط للعلياء لاحبة وحي مشعل خير بالهدى التزما شيخ إذا مد لهم الخطب أو عثرت به الهموم استثار العزم والهمم تراه في لجة الأحداث متئدا حتى يسد بحسن الرأي من ثلما ولا تردد يوما عند معضلة بل أنه منذ بدء الأمر قد حسما وشخص الداء عن علم وتجربة مثل النطاسي داوى العي والسقما إذا أشار إلى أمر بحكمته ترى الصعاب لديه طأطأت ندما وقام بالأمر تحدو خطوه ثقة والله ما خاب من بالحكمة اعتصما وقام بالأمر تحدو خطوه ثقة والله ما خاب من بالحكمة اعتصما حيتك يا سيدي أبيات قافية كأنها لؤلؤ البحرين قد نظما من موطن الحب من بحريننا نطقت أسمى المعاني فأضحت باسمكم علما ومن ديار أبي سلمان قد صدحت والحب في حرفها قد طوع القلم ذاك الكريم الذي ضوت مرابعه للضيف واستبشرت أبياته كرما نسل الأكارم من عليا أوال ومن يشبه أباه ورب البيت ما ظلما نسل الأكارم من عليا أوال ومن يشبه أباه ورب البيت ما ظلما أخوة جمعتنا فهي باقية قد شاد بنيانها الآباء فالتأما أواصر الدم والقربى تجمعنا فإنما نحن أنتم أسرة ودما حدودنا القلب لا بر يفرقنا ولا المسافات أو بحر قد التطما تاريخنا والليالي البيض شاهدة بأنه واحد لم يقطع الرحمة تاريخنا والليالي البيض شاهدة بأنه واحد لم يقطع الرحمة فإن تأوهت البحرين من ألم ترى الكويت بحزن تشتكي الألم أو إن تبسمت البحرين في فرح رأيت ثغر كويت المجد مبتسما ولا أظن قوافي الشعر كافية حتى أوثق حبا دام بينهما ودمتما ظل عز في مرابعنا ودمتما حصن عدل يحرس القيما ودمتما حصن عدل يحرس القيما والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته
His Majesty the King hosted a luncheon in honor of His Highness the Kuwaiti Emir and his official accompanying delegation. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa was at the forefront to bid farewell to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mish'al Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, upon his departure. After concluding his visit to the kingdom, during which he held talks with His Majesty on bilateral relations and regional and international developments, also present were His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the National Guard Commander, His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Majesty the King's representative for him. Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of the Royal Court, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and a number of their Highnesses and Excellencies. Based on the established historical ties and strong fraternal relations between Kuwait and uh, their brotherly people, and uh, the, to strengthen bilateral relations and the strategic partnership, the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mishal Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, made an official visit to Bahrain. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received His Highness the Emir at Sakhir Palace, where they held an official discussion session. The two sides reviewed bilateral relations and ways to develop them in all fields, recalling the important and constructive role played by the late His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah in order to continue developing relations between the two countries. His Majesty the King awarded His Highness the Emir the Order of Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa in appreciation of His Highness's efforts and his role in consolidating relations between the two brotherly countries. His Highness Sheikh Mish'al expressed hopes that the upcoming 33rd Arab Summit, which will be held in Manama on May 16th, will strengthen joint Arab action and unify Arab efforts to confront challenges and end conflicts and achieve peace security and stability. The two sides praised the growth of trade relations and bilateral investments and stressed the importance of expanding the horizons of cooperation and economic partnership to achieve bilateral integration and develop economic opportunities. The two sides welcome Kuwaiti and Bahraini investors and companies to expand their businesses in the two countries and take advantage of the opportunities available in the mega projects taking place in all sectors. 
The two sides affirmed their keenness to enhance bilateral cooperation in all fields and praised the success of the meeting of the Joint Security Committee between the two countries in July 2023. The two sides discussed the process of joint Gulf cooperation and the outstanding achievement it has achieved in response to the aspirations of the citizens of the GCC countries towards interconnection, cooperation and integration. They stressed the importance of maintaining the cohesion, solidarity and unity of the GCC countries. The two sides discussed the latest regional developments and their repercussions on Arab relations, regional security and stability, and stressed the importance of Iraq's respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Kuwait and adherence to bilateral and international pledges and agreements and all relevant UN resolutions. They stressed the importance of Iraq's commitment to the agreement regulated maritime navigation in Nahor Abdullah, signed between Kuwait and Iraq after it was ratified by both countries and it was jointly deposited or deposited with the UN and rejected the Iraqi side on unilateral cancellation of the security exchange protocol signed in 2008 and its map approved in the joint plan to ensure safe navigation in Khor Abdullah. The two sides also renewed support for Security Council Resolution 2107, which requested the Special Representative of the Secretary General and the Head of the UN Assistance Mission for Iraq to strengthen support and facilitate efforts related to searching for missing Kuwaitis and third country nationals and determining their fate or returning their remains within the framework of the Tripartite Committee and the Emerging Technical Subcommittees. Under the auspices of the International Committee of the Red Cross Return Kuwait property, including the National Archives, and call on Iraq and the UN to reach a final solution to all these unfinished issues. The two sides affirm that the Dura field is located in the marine area of Kuwait and ownership of the natural resource in the submerged area adjacent to the Kuwaiti-Saudi divided zone is between Kuwait and Saudi Arabia only. They discuss the developments in Palestine and the Arab-occupied lands and express concern on the catastrophic humanitarian crises and brutal war in Gaza that claim the lives of tens of thousands of unarmed civilians and the destruction of vital institutions, places of worship, infrastructure and the headquarters of international organizations as a result of the blatant attacks of Israel, the occupying power. They stress the importance of the international community, especially the Security Council, of its responsibility to stop military operations in the Palestinian territories and protect civilians in accordance with international law and international humanitarian law. They called for pressure on Israel to stop its aggression and prevent attempts to impose forced displacement on Palestinians from Gaza, which is a flagrant violation of international humanitarian law and international laws. The two sides stress the need to enable international humanitarian organizations to provide humanitarian aid and relief to the Palestinians, including UN organizations. They affirmed their determination to continue humanitarian efforts aimed at providing relief aid to alleviate the human suffering of the Palestinian people in Gaza. They called on the international community to support the efforts of the UNRWA and enable it to perform its humanitarian tasks, stressing the important humanitarian and vital role the agency plays in providing services and meeting the basic needs of approximately 5.7 million Palestinian refugees. The two sides stress the need to intensify efforts to reach a comprehensive and just settlement of the Palestinian cause in accordance with the principle of the two-state solution as stated in the Arab Peace Initiative and the relevant international legitimacy resolutions in a way that guarantees the Palestinian people their right to establish their independent state on the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. They affirm the importance of reaching a comprehensive political solution to the Yemeni crisis in accordance with the three terms of reference, expressing full support for the international and regional efforts of Saudi Arabia and Oman to end the Yemeni crisis. Crises. They stress the importance of maintaining the security and stability of the Red Sea region and respecting the rights to maritime navigation in it in accordance with the provisions of international law and the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea in 1982 to preserve the freedom of international trade and interest. At the end of the visit, the Mayor of Kuwait expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the warm reception and generous hospitality he and the accompanying delegation received. His Majesty the King wished good health and happiness to the Emir and further progress for the Kuwaiti people under His Highness's leadership. Bahrain and Kuwait share close and historic relations due to the keenness of the leadership of the two countries to support them in various fields for the benefit of their people. More in this report. The historical and fraternal relations between Bahrain and Kuwait have always been characterized by solidity and prosperity within the framework of the keenness of the leaderships of the two countries to develop strategic partnership at the various political, economic, social, cultural and media levels within the framework of the GCC Council and the keenness to strengthen joint Arab action and serve Arab and Islamic causes. 
The mutual visits between the leaderships of the two brotherly countries are a witness to the development and strength of relations in various fields. These relations have supported and developed cooperation to build on the achievements made at the bilateral level and at the GCC Council level, which also includes the political, economic and social aspects. The keenness to strengthen the common cause and the unified vision adopted by the two countries contributed to strengthening Kuwaiti-Bahraini relations, which was reflected positively on various levels and fields. The prosperous era of the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mish'al al-Ahmed al-Sabah, has a full of achievements in the field of diplomacy. More in this report. With a balanced approach and in accordance with principles, Kuwait continues its foreign policy, the most prominent of which is solidarity and unity of Gulf destiny and Arab unity. Its policy has also been based on assisting Arab countries with all the political and material capabilities it possesses, including providing grants and loans to countries. The activity of the Emir of Kuwait was evident throughout history. When he was the crown prince during the reign of Emir Nawaf al-Ahmed al-Sabah and his representation of the Emir on his behalf in various regional and international forums confirms and maintains the achievements of Kuwaiti foreign policy over more than 60 years. During the prosperous era of the Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Mish'al al-Ahmed al-Sabah, Kuwait embarked on this important stage of its history, based on these constants, and its emir seeks to continue what previous leaders built on the legacy of the Kuwaiti diplomacy to achieve further progress and prosperity. Kuwait's role will remain clear as a country that seeks to exercise a positive role in bringing viewpoints closer and resolving disputes and differences by peaceful means. Bahrain and Kuwait share an economic partnership that extends to many oil and non-oil commercial sectors. The Kuwaiti-Bahraini Joint Higher Committee contributed to strengthening economic relations by concluding many agreements and partnerships between commercial institutions in both countries. More in this report. Within the framework of historical fraternal ties and commonalities, Bahraini-Kuwaiti relations are witnessing tangible development at all levels, especially in the economic field, which is evident in the development of the volume of trade exchange between the two countries, which reached $482 million, while direct Kuwaiti investment in Bahrain exceeded $2.3 billion. Commercial and economic relations have witnessed tremendous leaps, especially in the last decade, due to Bahrain's supportive and stimulating environment to attract more companies and investment diversification. At the level of bilateral agreements, the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development signed 19 agreements with Bahrain worth approximately $1.5 billion to achieve the agreed-upon sustainable development between the two countries to serve the vision of the two leaderships. There are also more than 50 cooperation agreements signed through more than 10 joint hire committees between the two countries, including the health, education, housing, transportation and energy sectors, which contributes to strengthening cooperation in important vital fields. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the UAE Minister of State for Defense Affairs and member of the UAE Cabinet, Mohammed bin Mbarak Fadl Al Mazrouri at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of the ties between the two countries and their people thanks to the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and the President of the UAE and Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. His Royal Highness affirmed that the long standing historic bilateral relations contributed to the cooperation and joint coordination between the two countries in various fields. For his part, Al-Mazrouri conveyed the greetings of the UAE President and the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and Ruler of Dubai and Minister of Defense, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al-Maktoum, to His Majesty and His Royal Highness. He also expressed their condolences for the loss of Major Abdullah Rashid al naimi who lost his life in a terrorist attack along with several servicemen from the United Arab Emirates while carrying out training missions in Somalia. His Royal Highness thanked the leadership government and people of the UAE for their sincere condolences and conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and his greetings to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. His Royal Highness also conveyed the condolences of His Majesty the King and his condolences to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum for the fallen servicemen of the UAE and wished a speedy recovery for those who were injured. For his part, Al Mazrouri expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness's commitment to consolidating bilateral cooperation for the benefit of both countries and their people. 
The National Security Advisor, Royal Guard Commander Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Guard Special Force Commander Staff Colonel His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkin His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Defense Affairs Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the newly appointed Commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command Commander of the U.S. Fifth Fleet and Commander of the Combined Maritime Forces Vice Admiral George M. Wyckoff at Trafa Palace. His Royal Highness emphasized the strength of bilateral relations and joint cooperation between Bahrain and the U.S. in various fields including military and defense. His Royal Highness commended the strategic partnership between Bahrain and the U.S. which has been bolstered through the signing of MOUs and bilateral agreements. These collaborations have played an important role in advancing the progress and growth of both countries, notably the recently signed Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement, which enhances regional and global security, prosperity and development. His Royal Highness welcomed Vice Admiral Wyckoff to the Kingdom and wished him success in his duties, emphasizing the pivotal role of the U.S. alongside allied countries in consolidating international peace and security. During the meeting, His Royal Highness and the Vice Admiral discussed the latest regional and global developments and issues of common interest. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkin, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. The BDF Commander in Chief, uh, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, received UAE Minister of State for Defense Affairs and member of the UAE Cabinet, Mohammed bin Mbarak Fadl al Mazroui. The National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander, Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Guard Special Force Commander, Staff Colonel His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi, attended the meeting. The UAE Minister conveyed the condolences of the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, and Vice President of the UAE, Prime Minister Ruler of Dubai. In Minister of Defense, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Commander in Chief, and the relatives of the fallen serviceman, Major Abdullah Rashid Al Naimi, who lost his life while performing training missions with the UAE Armed Forces in Somalia. The Commander in Chief expresses sincere condolences to the President of the UAE and Vice President of the UAE, Prime Minister, Ruler of Dubai, and Minister of Defense on the loss of several servicemen of the UAE Armed Forces, praying to Allah the Almighty to rest their souls in eternal peace and wishing a speedy recovery for those injured. Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed hailed the strong, long-standing Bahraini and Marathi relations that were consolidated by His Majesty the King, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa launched the Inouat Foundation, a subsidy, subsidiary of a GFH Financial Group, and its first project, NFS, in a celebration held at the Raffles Al Arim Palace Hotel. Sheikh Khalid stressed that the contributions of the private sector in presenting pioneering projects and providing qualitative initiatives would reflect positively on accelerating the pace of progress and achieving many accomplishments that keep pace with the goals of the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the follow up by of His Royal Highness uh, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Deputy Prime Minister explained that the private sector in Bahrain enjoys full support to play its usual role in implementing innovative high quality projects to achieve benefits that bring development to the society and the economic movement in the Kingdom. Nawat focuses on creating partnerships that support sustainable development to benefit from the power of creative industries that enhance innovation and help the prosperity of societies and economies. It also devotes its efforts to supporting communities in the MENA region through innovative humanitarian projects. NFS is a health and psychological care center located in Al Arim Project and it seeks to comprehensively rehabilitate individuals in terms of physical and psychological health. Sheikh Khalid noted that uh, this project represents an addition to the medical and therapeutic tourism sector in the kingdom. Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Nawad Foundation and CEO of GFH, Hicham Marais, extended his gratitude to the Deputy Prime Minister for honoring the launch ceremony of the Nawad Foundation and its first project in Nafas. Arrayes also stressed that the launch comes in line with the group's commitment to the importance of devoting the principle of social and environmental responsibility and governance in partnership with relevant parties in the public and private sectors. For her part, uh, the CEO of uh, the Nawat Foundation, Sheikh Hala 
President Mohammed Al Khalifa said that no team believes in the unlimited potential of our society and therefore the launch came with the aim of supporting and enabling innovation and creativity to reach their full potential and energies. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs held its regular session presided over by its chairman, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The council extended its condolences to His Majesty the King, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister, the people of Bahrain and the family of the fallen serviceman, Major Abdullah Rashid al Naimi, who lost his life while performing his national duty. The council also congratulated His Majesty and His Royal Highness on the 23rd anniversary of the National Action Charter and the 56th anniversary of the establishment of the BDF. The meeting recalled the firm principles of the Charter that reflect the wise vision of His Majesty, noting that the Charter's religious, moral, and humanitarian principles and values. The Council preside or praised the role of the BDF along with other security and military sectors in protecting the national or the nation, preserving its historical achievements and gains, and defending it to maintain the country's security, stability, and independence. The Council called on the Sunni and Jafari Waqf directors to prepare mosque on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan. In conjunction with the celebration of the International Day of Human Fraternity, the Council praised Baha'i's efforts in this field under the leadership of His Majesty. The Council then discussed the topics on its agenda. After the adoption of the National Action Charter, the educational sector witnessed a qualitative shift that had positive effects on the educational process, placing the Kingdom of Bahrain among the ranks of developed countries capable of keeping pace with global developments in the educational field. More in this report. Education and culture are two parallel lines in the Renaissance, development and progress of peoples. The National Action Charter guaranteed this right and stressed through its provisions the importance of working to advance education and enhance the concept of culture in various educational and civil society institutions through educational curricula, seminars and lectures in various aspects of life. Since the issuance of the National Action Charter, the Ministry of Education has taken upon itself to develop its vision for the education system to provide educational curricula with the necessary culture to be the basic building block in building the edifice of progress in a way that fits Bahrain's position on the global education map. The anniversary of the National Action Charter is a platform for drawing up a roadmap that the Ministry of Education followed and was able to play a pivotal role at all levels starting with developing curricula and providing all the factors of a successful educational environment through which the latest mean of technology and knowledge are available, all the way to preparing and qualifying educational cadres through development. A coordination meeting was held in the presence of the President of the International Tennis Federation, ITF, David Haggerty. The President of the Bahrain Tennis Federation, Sheikh Abdelaziz bin Barak Al Khalifa, and the representative of the International Tennis Federation for West Asia, Amir Barghi. A number of topics related to the development of tennis in Bahrain and West Asia were discussed, in addition to a number of proposals. Opinions and experiences were also exchanged on developing tennis and making it more attractive to young people, including strengthening infrastructure and developing programs and enhancing the technical and technological aspects related to sports. In addition to examining ways to enhance joint cooperation between the Bahrain Tennis Federation, the International Federation of Tennis and the West Asian Federation. The meeting comes within the framework of the official visit of the ITF president to Bahrain, during which he met with a number of sports officials in the kingdom. We welcome the president of the ITF here in Bahrain and today is our first uh, working meeting and we have quite a large uh, list of items to go through on our agenda but uh, we are very interested in learning on how to develop our players make Bahrain a center for uh, juniors uh, training and maybe one day in the future have Bahrain as a training center we uh, also uh, want to train our uh, umpires and the officiating team that we have here in Bahrain who are very knowledgeable about being chair umpires and linesmen. And I think if we can try and train more Bahrainis who have graduated from high school in the physical education department and get them into the tennis sport, then uh, we can also provide uh, a service to them and to the country. 
Besides that, we're looking at uh, encouraging more girls and women to participate in the uh, sport of tennis. And there are just so many items that we have to discuss today so that we have a roadmap for the next three, four, five years maybe. Well, today we're going to have a meeting, our working meeting, to go through a little bit of what we saw yesterday um, and some ideas and plans of how we can have more junior players come through the pipeline, um, coaches' education, what we can do to improve that, to have more coaches, uh, and really work in not just in Bahrain but in the region on how we can grow and strengthen tennis. So looking forward to today's meeting where we put together more concrete actions and ideas of how many tournaments we need, how many players that we want to grow to as, as we move through the next, say, five-year plan. The advanced stages of the Ministry of Interior Challenger Tennis Tournament continue with 15 matches taking place on the tennis courts at the Officers Club. The tournament was inaugurated by the General Supervisor of the tournament, Sheikh Khalid bin Rashid Al Khalifa, along with the presence of the President of the International Tennis Federation, David Haggerty, and President of the Bahrain Tennis Federation, Sheikh Abdelaziz bin Mubarak Al Khalifa. More in this report. His Excellency Sheikh Khalid bin Rashid Al Khalifa, the General Supervisor of the Ministry of Interior Bahrain Tennis Challenger Championship, inaugurated the accompanying exhibition of the tournament. The event was attended by Mr. David Haggerty, President of the International Tennis Federation, Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, President of the Bahrain Tennis Federation, as well as officials, athletes, and spectators who witnessed the matches held at the Public Security Officer Club courts. The exhibition included various activities and events with the participation of the police musical band. Additionally, different competitions and sport activities were organized for the public. We have a lot of matches happening and I also think we're kind of warming up. Um, we have more to come. Um, the further we go, um, the, the stronger the matches get. And um, looking forward, we just um, opened the fan zone here and it's looking really, really nice, um, happy faces everywhere, and we hope to see um, anyone that could make it, to be honest. This is my first visit to Bahrain, and I've been so impressed by everything, but especially by the event that's being put on this week, and it, my first visit to the Expo as well, like really impressed with just everything and the attention to detail. I think this is a, an exciting tournament, not just for Bar Bahrain, but for the Challenger Tour, and I think this tournament is just going to go from strength to strength over the next few years, so it's, it's really a pleasure to be here, and I think it's an event that everyone in Bahrain should be proud of. A little bit. We actually played the guys we, we played in the first round uh, in November last year. Uh, so we know them a little bit, so I think we have a plan. <laughs> yeah, we, we always have a plan to play, of course, there. And we have to play our own game as well. But we know how the opponents play, so I think uh, we, we have a good strategy to play. <laughs> the advanced stages of the Ministry of Interior Bahrain Tennis Challenger Championship will continue with 15 matches on the tennis court at the Officers Club, with both morning and evening sessions. Bahraini player Yusuf Qa'ed will play his first match in the tournament against Italian player Fabio Fognini, who is ranked second in the tournament. The tournament's top-ranked Australian player Christopher O'Connell will face British player Billy Harris along with other strong matches. Wishing all the players good luck in their matches today. Reporting for Bahrain International Television, Safiya Al-Hajari.